Well, map.get is really a pattern match. Ooh, what a cliffhanger. At this point, the conversation left Project Valhalla behind and got into pattern matching and Project Amber. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. Many months later. Well, map.get is really a pattern match. So, okay, I've got to, now I have to rewind and say what a pattern match is, right? So, so um, people have seen a very limited form of pattern matching in Java, uh, but the, there is a much more general form of pattern matching coming. And a pattern match combines three things that we do all the time uh, into one operation. It's, it applies some kind of test or predicate to a target. Are you a foo? And then uh, the answer to that is known to the control flow. So we can feed that into definite assignment analysis. If you say, you know, if X instance of, you know, foo, et cetera. Um, and if it matches, we will conditionally extract information from it that might involve casting it to a foo and calling accessors and, and what have you. So you can think of uh, map.get as being a pattern match on a map. You're saying, are you a map that has a mapping for the key hello? And either the, uh, the pattern match doesn't succeed, in which case that's no wasn't in the map, or it does succeed, in which we conditionally extract the corresponding value for, uh, for it. So if Java had pattern matching in 1995, uh, or I guess more like 97, that's when map came along, um, we would have expressed it not as a method that returns null to mean it wasn't there. We would have expressed it as a pattern that takes as input a key and conditionally binds a value and uh, has a, you know, did it work, did it not work, you know, Boolean side channel that the language semantics can track. And therefore, you know, you can, um, it, you can only reference the extracted value if the match actually succeeded. So uh, we don't have this sophistication of pattern matching in the language yet, but there is a detailed roadmap for how to get there. The patterns that we've seen so far, which started with type patterns and pretty soon we'll have record patterns. And after that, we'll have deconstruction patterns. Um, Map.get is a point on that uh, spectrum. And eventually the, you know, we will be able to rewrite map.get not as a method, but as a pattern and we won't have this problem. Yeah, because that pattern doesn't need a central value anymore to say, oops, I didn't find it. I can just Actually, I was, I was kind of, one of the interesting things that I recently read, uh, I always had this thought as well, ah, damn it, I wish optional could just, uh, sorry, map could just return optional. I never really thought this through, right? I was like, I wish I, I wish it did, blah, blah, blah. And then I recently read somebody else asking about that. And you know how it goes. When you think something, you're convinced of it. When somebody else says something like, well, I'm sure that dude is wrong. Uh, <laughs> so I actually thought about it and I realized that that actually does work. Like even if like map cannot return optional because like if it contained null as a value, it will still either return optional a non-empty optional containing null, which fortunately is not possible, or it right. return the empty optional, which would very clearly signal that nope, nothing to see here. So actually, even if optional were around, map.get returning optional of v would have fixed almost nothing of this. The only, well, nothing of what we discussed. The only thing that it did would fix is would give your compiler indication that wait, something might not be here. Right. Let me not call a method on it because maybe it fails with an NPE. But it wouldn't yep. have fixed the underlying problem that I need to signal two things: presence, absence, and the value. Because unfortunately, absence and one of those values uh, coincide. Right. Yeah. Yep. And, 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 you know, our friends in the functional community are snickering, saying, well, you know, if only optional were a mode ad, you wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> so one of the interesting things about Amherst is uh, pattern matching is now going to move into switch. Mm -hmm. Basically, that jab does three things. The one, the thing that I just mentioned, where you can use patterns at the moment, that's type patterns in a switch, which looks really good. So you can say switch over an object case. It's a string S. Here is something to do with S. The third thing it does is guarded patterns, which means uh, case string S and S length is larger zero. And the second thing it does, it does, at least that's the order it picks, is dealing with null. So you can say case null. So just for my understanding, this capability case null that applies just as well to non-pattern switches, correctly? Is that is it right? So will I be able to yeah. use uh, switch over the string case A, case B, yeah. case null? 
Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> so like Knowles and Switch is a, a good example of um, what, I, what I like to call the linear thinking trap. So in, in, in Java 1.0, you could only switch over primitives mm -hmm. in, you know, um, chars, uh, you know, et cetera. Um, and then um, in Java 5, uh, we added auto boxing. So if you could switch over int, now you could also sw switch over integer. And so now that was the first time that you could have a reference type as the operand of a switch. And so what did they decide to do about null? Because you know, now that you have a reference type, you have to worry about null. And they said, you know what? That's a stupid value to switch over. We're just going to have switch throw an exception if you pass null, uh, because it comes right from auto boxing. You say it unboxes the target, and then you know, and, and if it's null unboxing, we'll, we'll throw a null, null pointer exception. And that was an OK answer. And then, um, and the same thing was true with enums, right? We added switches over enums in five. And again, a null enum is kind of a pretty questionable, you know, thing. Um, so they just said, yeah, null suck, throw, throw a null pointer exception. And then in seven, we added strings and switch in the context of Project Coin. And Project Coin had a deliberately constrained mission. Um, and so it seemed sensible at the time to say, well, the other reference types you can switch over when they're null, we throw. So let's just keep doing that and not rock the boat. And that was like a little bit more of a questionable choice. It was, I mean, it was a understandable choice in, in its context, but you know, it means that if you want to check for null, now you have to say if it's null, else otherwise switch, and that's an ugly thing to do. Um, when we get to the generality of pattern matching, it becomes clear that this null hatred, you know, is just counterproductive. Um, and, you know, in particular, uh, when we get one step beyond in pattern matching from where we are now, there are a number of refactorings where you have per perhaps you want to refactor a switch to a chain of if, if, if else, you know, tests, or you want to refactor a switch over a, a set of nested patterns into a um, uh, you know a, a nested switch instead, and you want the obvious transformation to mean the obvious thing, but when you have the null hostility of switch in in the picture, uh, it means that those uh, transformations don't actually mean what you think they, they mean, and so we needed to have a general way to deal with null and switch, which, like I said, is is you know, shows up once in a while with strings today, but will show up much more often mm. when you start to have, you know, w when switch gets more powerful, its ability to like exclude things like null get more limited. Yeah, I have to say that um, initially, so when I, read, when I read that, and then of course the, the default branch does not capture the null case for backwards compatibility right. reason. And at first I was right. like, ah, that's too bad. Would have, I mean, I know why not, but would have been nice. And it took me, I don't think very long, like a couple of days, after revisiting this thought for like the third time, I I totally switched my opinion. I was like, that's very good. Screw now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to be able to get a null pointer exception by default, basically, because I, my, my personal program style is to try to avoid null as a legal value everywhere. So the sooner right. I get exceptions, the better. Records already, sorry, but pissed me off because now I have to create a constructor just to call require non null. Uh, because the, my <laughs> constru the constructor is usually the place where I do the null check, right? I just do that on constructors yeah. and then nowhere else. Um, that's mm -hmm. usually my approach to that. I mean, of course, on boundaries, system boundaries to the outside world. But like within my system, yeah. it's just there and nowhere else. Basically, just like it shouldn't even pop up there, but you know, fail fast if it does. And with switch, like if the default case would actually eat the null case, which is different things. The one is potentially an error case, and the other one is like, well, what else can I do if all the other cases right. are exhausted? Um, so I really think that even if we would go back to square one and we could design null and default, the like case null, sorry, default to include case null, uh, with what I, what, I, what I think now, I would not actually have liked that decision. I think it's better not to do that. Well, and it's so easy to say case null comma default if that's what yeah, you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, so if you want, you know, um, so so the, the, the only thing, the only decision that we made that I think people will find questionable is the behavior of total type patterns. So, if you have a switch over string, 
Um, and you have a case that says case string S, which has to be at the bottom because uh, any other case after that would be dead. That's a total pattern. And we decide that that does match null. And that's a little surprising to people at first. Um, and the reasoning for that becomes more obvious when you start to think about nested patterns and unrolling nested patterns into nested switches. Hey, Nikolai from February 2022 here. Given that this conversation between Brian Götz and me happened in May 2021, it held up exceptionally well. Almost everything that was said still applies. In fact, the only exception may be what Brian just said about switch making total patterns match null. There's a discussion about that on the Project Amber spec mailing list happening right now. It's linked in the description, very illuminating. While you're down there, you can do me a favor and like this video if you enjoy it and subscribe to the channel for more Java content. Take your time, I'll wait. Ready? Great, uh, then let's dive back into the conversation, which now moves on to exhaustiveness of switch statements. Is it true, like did I understand it correctly, if you switch not with an expression but with a statement over a sealed class, then the switch has to be exhaustive, otherwise you get a compile error? So, so yeah, so this was a, a last minute change that we made, which um, we came to very we came to very late. Uh, so um, going back to Java 12 when we did switch expressions. So uh, it was a forced move that a switch expression has to be exhaustive because an expression always has to have a value. Yeah. Right. Um, and so in a switch statement, you know, you could have a switch on, on, on strings and say case foo, case bar, and then not have a default. And th that's kind of like an if without an else. Yeah. But if you try to do that with an expression, the compiler will say, no, 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 wait a second. You've got to give me an answer for every possible value. And either um, there's a default clause. That's one th way to make a total. And the other way to make a total is if you're switching over an enum or a sealed type to cover all the cases. Yeah. And then the compiler knows, okay, you've covered all the cases, you don't need a default clause. Um, and that's fine. And, you know, but it, it was then this big asymmetry where expressions had to be total. And you got some very helpful type checking from that. So if you thought that you had an enum whose cases were A, B, and C, and you said case A, case B, case C, and it turns out there's really a D that you didn't know about, the compiler will say, hey, wait a second, you forgot D. Um, whereas if you had said default, then D would just be like, you know, swept under the carpet yeah. and uh, no one would notice the bug. So that kind of type checking is super helpful. And it was really sad that you got that type checking for expression switches, but not for statement switches. And so at the very last minute, we pulled this switcheroo that I think will annoy people in the short run and make them happy in the long run. And by saying, okay, if you've got an old style switch, you're switching over ints, your case labels are all constant, rules are the same as they always were. Mm -hmm. If you're using any of the new stuff about switch, you're switching over, you know, um, uh, something that isn't int long, you know, et cetera, uh, or you're using any patterns, then you do have to make it exhaustive. And it's really easy to make a switch exhaustive. You say default colon nothing. Right, um, and you just fall out of the switch. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, what that whoa, whoa, means wait, is, wait, 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 what, wait. Uh, do you? I never, I never wrote default colon nothing. I actually have to think about this. <laughs> yeah, it's the same as default colon break if you want to be explicit. But yeah, it's, okay. It's basically say, in the default case, do nothing. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Which, yes. Yeah. So we're being a little bit mean in that we're forcing people to write that if they want to write get any of the new switch goodies. But what it means is that in the long run, uh, we actually may be able to deprecate the uh, old style statement switches don't have to be exhaustive. And we can get to a place where all switches are exhaustive. All switches can get better type checking. Okay, um, that's, that, that, that's, the one, that's the one that convinced me because I read that earlier and I really didn't, I didn't like it very much. Well, I already back then said somebody has to explain this to me because that happens frequently. I read something with it like, what, that's weird. And you know, when I get the rationale, it makes sense. So with that end goal in mind, then that makes sense. What was annoying me before, and I th we already discussed this term, I'm not sure whether we did, but I saw you discuss on the term, the term with, on the mailing list, is consistency. How important yeah. is it? With what? What do you pay for that? And all of that. I felt statements are, don't have to be exhaustive. Expressions have to be exhaustive. 
is a very clear cut and it's also very easy to explain because well the expression you want that value you want a value out of that so basically so then you have to cover all the cases clear right but yeah. with the statement yeah. it's imperative code you just like leave out a few and just fall out of the switch so i felt that that was very natural and easy to explain easy to understand this dichotomy and i really don't like this weird l cut now where you have like well the expression yeah. part is full of that and then the reference part is like half has to be exhausted but the other one doesn't uh did I say statement correctly in expression? Whatever, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, okay, but if we face this part out uh, in the long run, then yes, then, then, it's all, then it's all the same again. And then I agree. I mean, getting this exhaustiveness checks is kind of nice. Uh, I just didn't like that you didn't have a clear cut anymore about where to do it and where not to do it. Right, and that's what I meant by it's going to make people unhappy in the short term yes. because <laughs> the shape of the cut is weird. And... Uh, and, and, you know, maybe they'll start to get warnings on code that always worked and now the compiler is going to make them utter a special magic word in order to shut up the warnings. And in the short term, people will hate that. But, um, you know, the alternative was you have this permanent, if regular split of yes. switch expressions always are exhaustive, always get the good type checking and statement switches never get the good type checking. And, you know, and then people are going to say, hey, can I have a way to turn on the good type checking? And it's like, but then people will forget to turn it on. And, and, and so, you know, and then the accusation will be really the switch is two things, but you're using one keyword for it. And it's all uh, this yeah. is all a fake roo, right? And, and this would this kind of goes back to the big one of the big questions when we started this project of should we try to rehabilitate switch, which, you know, switch had a very, you know, um, troublesome youth, right? You know, uh, and, and like, should we try to rehabilitate it into a, you know, a productive uh, citizen, or should we, you know, make a new, make a new thing. And a lot of people in the community said, Oh, just make a new thing. So it's always more fun to make something new than to try to fix something old. Uh, but the reality, the choice wasn't really make a new thing. It was have two things. Yeah, yeah. And so we tried to rehabilitate switch, but then people said like, well, you have one construct, but it has sort of two separate sets of rules. Isn't that like having two things? And, and so if we have a path to getting to where it's really one thing and you know, the, the, the two different aspects are a temporary way stop along that path. I think that's a very good answer. Yeah. Although I claim that switch is three dimensional, right? It's, now it's, it used to be two with the new jab it's three it's a normal versus pattern that's one i mentioned the other one is expression versus statement and i see that you're lining those and the third one is colon versus arrow uh, right and like i think i think that's fair i mean some of those some of those make sense because of legacy some of them just make sense period um right. and i just think like and there's sensible defaults to be had when people ask me i always tell them that well whether statement or expression you know the problem will dictate that you know right. if it's possible i think an expression is neater because of the advantage that you said right but mo mostly you will not really freely pick but yes please do the arrow unless you want fall through that's that's basically what i would tell people there right and the first one will go away eventually when we unify the statement expression might go away if valhalla enables void to be an actual type and then a statement switch will be isomorphic to avoid expression switch. <laughs> okay, we, we need more uh, time to go into that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the third one, the colon versus arrow, is, you know, that's largely a syntactic choice. But, but you know, but like, the, 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 you know, the, the thing that you mentioned actually was a point of contention during the design of expression switch, where a lot of people said, well, there's really four possible cases and this quadrant over here seems really useless, so you shouldn't allow that. And, uh, you know, that that is, that's what I, I like to think of that as the language design equivalent of overfitting the curve. Um, that, you know, the, the way we did it was rather than, rather than having three distinct forms, we have these two orthogonal axes that you can freely mix and match between. And what that does is it makes the constructs, construct simpler. So, you know, we're striving for uniformity. We've got, you know, some of these axes uh, will go away. Some of them will stick around, but you know, there's never any irregularities that you can't use X with Y. <laughs> okay, so thank you very, very much. Uh, and for being here, that was uh, great. And Valhalla and Amber, both of them, uh, we're going to talk about Amber, I guess, more. I really want to see whether there's more on the roadmap and where that goes. Maybe Amber is just like the, the indefinite project. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I think, 
it there's definitely a full employment act for language designers. There's always we can always make it better. Yeah, yeah, that's great words to to, to close on. Thank you very much once again, and I'll see you around. Bye, Brian. All right, thanks. Cheers. Bye, bye.